Hi everybody, it's Elaine and today I'm going to be reviewing the YA novel The Last Dragon, which is by Silvana de Moe. In the interest of giving you guys a synopsis without giving anything away, I'm going to read the back of the book. It says, In a world shrouded in darkness and continually lashed by rain, a young elf named Yorsha suddenly left, orphaned and alone. But soon the elf discovers he is part of a powerful prophecy to save the world from the dark age that has begun. First, however, Yorsh will have to find another orphan creature, the Earth's Last Dragon. I actually really like this book for a few reasons. First, like a lot of other YA novels, it's fast-paced. Uh, I also appreciated the novel's humor, especially in the beginning of the novel, part one, which had Yorsh as a younger individual, um, someone who didn't quite understand the human language causing to him to have a lot of misunderstandings with some of the other human characters. Um, I also like that it was willing to make fun of itself and I grew attached to some of the characters and was upset when bad things happened to them. With that being said, there were a few things that I did not like about this novel. First, I felt as though a lot of the characters had very simplistic personalities. For example, Yorsh, especially in the beginning of the novel, was really whiny and kind of a bit of a know-it-all. This is later overshadowed by the intelligence of the dragons he encounters. Um, but for the time being, in the beginning especially, it's kind of annoying. Um, he also lives by his own moral code and was described as moralistic and is also someone who's determined to accomplish whatever he sets his mind to, but he's also kind of absent-minded at the same time, which is a little odd. Anyway, um, I would have liked to see characters with uh, more intriguing personality profiles, if you will, and also a bit more depth. Some of the other characters uh, didn't really have a lot of depth to them or a very intriguing personality at all. Second, I felt as though this novel involved way too much crying, again, especially in part one of the novel. Uh, it seemed like the characters would just cry whenever they didn't know what else to do with themselves. Alternatively, they just get really angry almost out of the blue sometimes, and it was just odd. Um, third thing was that De Marie uh, favors long block paragraphs throughout a large portion of the novel, and I find them a lot harder than shorter paragraphs. I think it's easier to lose your place, especially when you're kind of distracted when you're reading and you get to that kind of like trance-like place. Um, and it also made me feel like I wasn't making any progress because there'd be this, you know, paragraph that was, let's say, a page long and I'm reading and I'm reading and I'm like, I'm just not going anywhere, am I? I mean, you were, but I think it's a psychological thing. It kind of bothered me. Um, I also really didn't like how Yorsha's name and his father's name were long and basically impossible to pronounce because each time I encountered them, I would stumble on it. Like, Yorsha's full name is Yorsh Krun... Yorsh Krun Squirkle? I think? Not really sure how that's pronounced, but it's a train wreck and it disrupted the flow, which I really didn't like. I like everything to be you know, easy to get through, and this did not allow for that. Um, definitely would have liked if she just used Yorsh, which is a little more manageable, and some sort of shortened version of his father's name. Well, that being said, like I said, I did enjoy this novel. I thought it was good. I look forward to reading the sequels at some point. From what I understand, they're not all translated into English yet from the original Italian, but that's something to look forward to. Anyway, I give this a 4 out of 5, and I think you guys should take the time to read it if you have a moment. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.